Hi, Bob Greenie here, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So I actually went out and I got this Helios lamp here, which I believe is a UV lamp. And it is Chislow, which means number 1912. And it is 220 volts, 300 watts. Now, a couple of things that immediately uh, were obvious is it, it seems to be very hand built. Um, there are areas where the paint has come off. It's quite heavy. I think this is uh, a thick uh, cast aluminium. There's a lot of cast aluminium here, um, but you can actually see it almost looked brushed on here. Uh, I don't know if you can see the detail on here where the, the paint is almost brushed on. So it may have been handmade, but I can definitely see that this little detailing on the top uh, has been put in by, you, you could imagine a, a sign painter doing it, this little brown detail. It's not, not recessed in any way, it's literally painted on, if I put my finger on that. And again, this is a cast aluminium handle, it's very uh, solid, and everything is connected in for the um, purpose of, I, I guess, uh, earthing. And uh, it's, it's just a thing of great beauty, it really is. Um, and uh, you can see this parabolic type uh, reflector here and if you go into the bulb area it has these uh, little ceramic beads here on the feed wires coming up to these little uh, screw fittings and the bulb itself and in the bulb you can see a filament um, I don't know whether that's an osmium filament or a tungsten filament um, probably one of those uh, I think these were made in Germany um, I, I haven't got the date on it yet you can see that would be where the gas would have been filled in whatever gas that is in there um, if it is UV maybe it's got some mercury in there I don't know um, maybe if it's very lucky uh, I could have some xenon in there um, but that's more used for flash and you can see the ceramic um, sort of uh, uh, pass through there and the metal uh, electrode on it and and again this beautiful cast stem uh, which holds the bulb and I guess that this is the earthing for the bulb and these are the um, uh, live and neutral for the bulb and then down on the control here uh, this unfortunately rotates um, uh, it rotated when I got it um, and I think I think I'll put it, it I think it goes in one or other position um, but we have this zero zero either side here and then if I turn it you listen to this it's a, a real clunky switch uh, which is wonderful and uh, I don't know whether the cables were changed at, at a different time uh, I actually don't know how old the style of uh, uh, power uh, plugs uh, were uh, maybe I can find a, a date on there Possibly, I don't know. Uh, I'll have a look at that with a bit more detail. Now, inside the container, uh, uh, there is, uh, it looks like a power resistor, maybe, I don't know. Uh, or maybe it's a primary and secondary. And there is another um, uh, transformer in there. So, uh, definitely uh, needing a transformer. And um, we'll have to find out what kind of volt that volts that is running. So, and it, other than that, it seems to be extremely simple. That It appears that there might be some sort of relay down there. I don't know if that looks like a relay to you. It looks a bit like a relay to me. And this is the switch without going in. I'm just sort of looking with the camera through the hole. Um, maybe I can zoom in. Let's see if I can do that. So I think this is the um, relay. I don't know. Maybe it's a condenser. Uh, there we have that. This is a, I believe it's a resistor maybe on a ceramic um, core. Uh, maybe someone can let me know uh, who is more familiar with things from this period. Uh, but it, if it is a resistor, it's a very, very high power resistor. Almost looks like a heater coil on a uh, glow stick experiment. So that's that. Looking at the wiring down here, this does actually look like it's more modern wiring. So someone and there's a little joiner block there so someone might have rewired this and that's encouraging uh, so you know um, it may actually work so you can see the pass throughs there and you can see the grommets here at the front end this is a look at the detailing on the switch and this is a look at some of the detailing on the painting 
close up on the handle. And uh, these are the eye guards. There's two of those. Um, and they do feel like they're made of plastic. So I have the light here in what I think is uh, the off position, although I don't know. <laughs> and uh, I've opened the cable out here and I've got a way of connecting it together. So um, this is going to be my switch, as it were, uh, to see if it's in the on or the off position. And I will set up the camera so we can see uh, what we see. Before I try and turn this on, I did notice when I was moving this around, this what looks like Bakelite um, foot, uh, it would appear that this is perished. And when I dragged it across the carpet here, it um, fell apart. Okay, now we have the socket in frame. I'm going to see what happens when I plug that in. And uh, you will see with me. Will it go poof? Will it trip the lights here? And everything, they will find out. Um, okay. Well, that went in okay. So, uh, I don't know if that is on or off. So we'll unplug that. I will turn the switch over here into this position. Let me find out whether it's a dodge or not. Ready? Three, two, one. And it's not doing anything. Now, of course, I don't know whether it's the bulb or it is the device. So uh, we need to check voltages. I'm going to do the old sniff test without touching it. Don't smell anything there. Okay, so I'm going to take that out again and we will flick this into the other position. And Try it again. Ready? Let's see if there's anything on the sniff test. Don't see anything there. 